Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a, a get ready with me. As I answer questions that I asked on Instagram, I gave you guys, I mean there probably aren't that many questions I haven't checked yet, but I did like a mini q and I said I'm going to get Botox, which I just came back, hence the dots all over my face. I'll list all the products that I'm using down below. I will not mention them because I will be focusing on the Q&A portion of this video. So I asked you guys on Instagram as I was leaving for my appointment like an hour ago that I was going to see Dr. Bernstein. Shout out Dr. Bernstein. You do not have social media or we'll probably see this. But if anybody is looking for anybody who's incredible dermatologist, Dr. Bernstein, he's been doing my face for years and I love him. Sunscreen all day, every day. It's a must. It's a mineral one, so it goes on very, very white, but we'll blend it, don't worry. I have my phone here. I'm gonna put the questions up and ready and we're gonna start this Q&A. My questions are regarding me, not other people. So first off, I will not answer questions like that. You guys know how I chose to deal with my divorce. I chose to keep it private and amongst ourselves. And I have stuck with that for nearly four years and I will continue sticking to that. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, these dots are Botox, which goes into one of my questions. How often do you get Botox? I go quarterly. I started doing Botox at 29 years old and I stopped obviously with pregnancy. So when I was pregnant with Luca, miscarriages, everything, I stopped doing Botox altogether. And then when I was breastfeeding and I breastfed Luca for 14 months. So there was no Botox for probably almost like three, four years at that point. But as soon as that 14 month breastfeeding was done, your girl went back to Botox. I personally love Botox. It is, in my opinion, the best thing that ever happened. I know a lot of people are against it. Trust me, I get the DMs. Everybody has the right to go through their own path in life. And my path includes Botox. And if yours doesn't, that's also completely fine. But mine does, and I love it. So, so I go every four months and like clockwork, like I book the appointment. Oh no, I lie, I'm sorry, I go four times a year, I go every three months, so I don't, I go quarterly. So I go, I was just thinking about it because I'm like, I just booked my appointment for January. So yeah, I go for three, I go every three months and it's a must. I do, Actually, Dr. Bernstein, I had him write down what it is that he does. I'm up to, I think I started off doing Botox. I was only getting about 22 units, but then again, I was only 29 years old. And now 10 years later, I'm up to, I think it's 42 or 48 units. And I do mostly forehead, glabella, and eyes. And um, to me, honestly, it's truly a must for me. I'm running out of foundation, so we are going to literally lick the bottom of the container right now. I love this foundation. You'll see my color. I'll warm back up from the um, from the sunscreen because the sunscreen really does not match my skin. It gives me like a white cast, but like it's only offered in three colors. It's like light, medium, or dark, and that was the medium, which really does not match my skin. But yeah, Botox, I love Botox. Oh, I also do filler once a year. Oh, this is a good one. Do you want more kids? I had said this even when I was pregnant with Luca. Like I knew I was a one and done mom. I knew that I wanted the lifestyle of just one child and the, the I don't know. I love the way we are. Like Luca's six and a half years old now and I feel like we have such a close relationship that I don't know that we would have been able to have that had she had a sibling. I always just wanted the one that I could just pour all my attention, all my like everything to, and just I'm very happy. I'm very content with my one and done decision. A lot of people told me that I would regret it when she got older, that she would ask for siblings. And um, I mean, she's six and a half years old. She's still 
is not really down with the sibling idea. She, she does mention once in a while that it would be nice to have a brother or sister. And then I'm like, but you realize you'd have to share the attention. And she's like, oh yeah. Never mind. I'm not interested in that. So the idea of Luca, like doing it for Luca or whatever, I don't think is something that she ever... Hold on, my mom is texting me. I don't feel the urge for a second child, and to be honest, I'm getting old. So I don't... I already had such issues with Luca. I can't imagine, like, and it wasn't considered a quote-unquote geriatric pregnancy, and I was high risk. So I can't imagine geriatric and high risk because this would also be a high risk so no thank you i'm good new bags that you are eyeing or are catching your eyes i love these questions so um i'm actually going to show you guys this bag i got this bag from coup deluxe coup deluxe is a rental company for handbags so i got i rented this bag for the week because i love this bag i cannot remember the name of it for the life of me i will write it right here so i rented it for a week originally from coup deluxe and then i was like can i extend it for a week because i've really been enjoying it and now i'm actively hunting for it on the vintage market because this bag is no longer available. That's the problem I'm having with Coup Deluxe. They have a lot of bags that you like but you can't get anymore. So this is on my hunt. I want this. I don't know, I'm feeling the return of the monogram. I have not been a monogram queen in a while and I'm feeling the return. Hard. Vintage bags you're on the hunt for. That one right there. But also to be honest, I now that I got my Birkin 25, which if you guys haven't seen the comparison video between the 25 and the 35, it just went live a few days ago. I will link it down below. I have not really carried any other bag to be very honest. So I would very much like to find another Birkin. I don't think it would be vintage though. I think it would just be pre-loved because I don't want to play the Hermes game and I am not about that life. Um, but I definitely do want another Birkin 25. I love the idea of this. Anyways, watch the video for the, my comparison, what I think about both. Um, but I want another 25 ASAP, but I want it in a color. Maybe a bit of a yellow. Oh. Hold on, I have to get this. Sorry about that, I had to get it. It is my real estate agent. Speaking of real estate agents, somebody has asked me, would you move? Um, a real estate agent is for a commercial property that just called, so not my home. Um, I have a few pieces of real estate for investment. I mostly have residential properties, but I do have a commercial property where I used to operate my business from that I have been trying to sell. If you know anyone, guys, let me know. But in terms of myself personally moving, no, I can't see it. When we bought this house, I knew that this was gonna be my forever. Um, it's next door to my parents, so it was kind of like a dream come true to me, to be honest. And it wasn't something, it wasn't something I ever would see us not being it. Now, the only thing is, I didn't expect that we were just gonna be two people living in this house. So our house is really big. Like, that's the only thing that I am, I recently looked at a condo just because I was like, this is so, like the square footage is so unnecessary for two girls. Um, I think because I have like a living in the city mentality, like I could live easily, the two of us in like 1200, 1300 square feet. We have like 3,300 square feet in this house, which is complete, if not more, it's almost 4,000. We have four floors. Like it's a lot of house for two small chickies. You know what I mean? I had never considered moving. I don't think I ever would, to be honest, but I mean, I think about it sometimes, to be very honest, because it's just a lot of house. I don't think Luca would let me move, to be honest, even if I wanted to. At the beginning, I a few years ago, I tried to get Luca to go look at condos. I was like, luxury high rise, pool, gym, tennis courts, let's do this. And she was like, no, no, it's not gonna happen. And then I tried again. I found a condo actually maybe six months ago that I really, 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 really liked. And I showed Luca and I was like, let's get set up a visit. We'll at least just go check it out together. And she's like, no. 
would have been the same school same district same friends literally five minutes away from this house and she was like no hey mel where do you usually buy a good vintage secondhand luxury goods so good spot for me is always ebay i always score on ebay i have to say um i'm a big fan i authenticate off pictures off eBay so I use Sabina Lynn you guys probably follow her on Instagram she's fantastic she's authenticated so many different bags for me and I trust her very 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 much I will link her down below um, so I use eBay and then I use a lot of Japanese resellers that I found through eBay I just go directly on their sites because they're actually less expensive than on eBay So I highly recommend if you go on eBay and you find a bag you like and it's a Japanese reseller I suggest you go directly on their website because chances are You'll end up getting the bag for cheaper directly on their website as opposed to buying it through eBay There's less fees and everything which is fantastic the whole thing about vintage is finding the best price humanly possible and I feel like I have mastered that. I do also love to go in person in Montreal. I think Ruse is unbelievable for vintage. I find they have really great vintage finds at really affordable prices. In terms of pre-loved, I do think Retaisha's selection is unbelievable. I think it's an uncomparable selection so those are my top places i would say sorry i'm tilting my head and i'm i know i'm not supposed to with botox on the first four hours and i'm like checking myself what is one dream you still want to realize so i don't know if i want to say this out loud because it's kind of homage but i guess i will because it's you guys and you're my besties um i dreamed of the family life like what my parents had and everything and having that stability in a relationship and i i hate that like my dreams just because i feel like i've achieved so much in my career and my life that i feel as though the only thing that i really feel i've i haven't accomplished is that family dynamic i don't feel like i have that or i ever have to be honest i I think the best way to say this because I had a relationship that was so independent where I just did whatever I wanted he just did whatever he wanted we didn't really spend very much time together we weren't we weren't a couple really to be honest I feel like I looking back and a lot of therapy I feel as though I was single almost for the past 20 some years and single just committed to only having relations with one person you know what I mean um, but I didn't feel as though I had that partnership or that commitment no we, there was a commitment I shouldn't say commitment but I don't I never had a partnership and that is really a dream of mine that I've wanted my entire life to have that partnership that partner and I know I hate just as a strong independent woman that my dream in life that I haven't done yet is relationship oriented but it is a big one for me I I don't know why just because maybe I have been I've never really been single I've been in relationship to relationship my entire life and it is something that I feel like I really missed out on and I really long that partnership I don't know if that makes any sense or if I sound like a complete loser saying this out loud but if I do it is what it is because I that really is something that I feel my I'm lacking in life at the end of the day this is what I've realized all you really have is your family and your your partner and it's not about the car you drive the house you live in and everything it's it's nice to have a nice house and to have the purse but I just love the idea of having that safety and family safety or like partnership safety if that makes sense we're gonna do the brown eyeliner that everybody is always asking me about it's not an eyeliner it's an eyeshadow from this Dior five couture palette Farah Paupière the color is in Mitza 
I am going to open this. You guys will be shocked in the condition of this thing. It is this brown over here that I use. And I love it, and I use it every single day, and it is not an eyeliner. I put it on with an angle brush, and that's it. I, I wet the angle brush, and I put on the eyeshadow wet, which is why it is in this despicable condition. How do you feel about not knowing what is the long-term use of Botox filler will look like? I am very much okay with it. Honestly, there's been a ton of research done on Botox and I am not concerned. And if there is something, considering the amount of people that do it, I am sure they will find something around. I know some people are very much against Botox. Trust me, I get them in my DMs every time I post that I get Botox done. But for me, it's, I don't wanna call people out because a lot of people are like, don't say I do Botox. I have so many friends of mine who are doctors who do Botox. I am sure that if it was something that was dangerous, they would not be doing it. So my whole thing with eyeliner is I screw up the wing every single time I do it. And that's why I like doing it with eyeshadow because then I just go in and I correct it. So I take this like concealer brush. This is the thing, when you're watching a girl who doesn't know how to do makeup, do makeup. I just go in with my concealer I dab the corner of the concealer brush on it and I just I carve it out. I make it nice and sharp. We're gonna make this work because we're not about redoing our makeup 18 times because we're not professionals and people know that. Voila! I'm gonna do the inner tear dock thing like this. Okay, let's get some more questions going. Favorite fine jewelry piece? Um, my collection with Anzi, which more pieces are dropping October 26th. I need to shoot the stuff. We're going to do a piercing party. If you're in Montreal, block that afternoon off. We're going to get pierced together. We could do a live piercing. We're trying to think, Joanna and I, like what we should be doing to celebrate the launch. But yeah, my favorite fine jewelry piece is my collection with Anzi, but also I love this necklace and the meaning behind it and all the stacking. Let me know down below if you guys would like to see a fine jewelry collection because I have a lot. Favorite Montreal restaurant for kids? I like Les Enfants Terribles. I think it's a great place. There's one right by us and we love going there. Luca loves the food. Honestly, Luca comes with me everywhere. She is a little queen in restaurants. I've never limited myself from going to a restaurant. Any re like I brought her to Budokan in New York. She is not a child that will ever act up in restaurants. I have been taking her out, living her best life since she's two weeks old and we never stopped. I just brought her with me and a lot of people are like, how do you get her to be so good in restaurants? And the thing is, it's not, it's not that she's so good in restaurants, it's just normal to her. I think I've just been bringing her for so long. It's not something that's out of norm for her. So it's not, I don't know how to say this, but it's, it would never come, it would never cross her mind to act a certain way in a restaurant because she knows that that's just not how to act in a restaurant. So she's been very well behaved. When she was younger, when she was like under two years old, I used to put myself an hour limit to restaurants. So I would order for us and I would prepay the bill. So as soon as she would start getting rowdy, I would just get up and leave and there would be nothing to stress out about. She was never allowed to have tablets, phones, toys. That is not something that we have at the restaurant. So she's honestly, she, I could bring her anywhere, but if she, but I, I think her favorite place is Les Enfants Terribles, the one in Outremont, and I like the one on Nuns Island. Oh, I also really like Lucille's on Monkland. That's a really great one for kids too. We went yesterday 
and it's a very enjoyable, kid-friendly spot. Pigeon on Monkland also is a good one. What Birkin are you looking into next? Leather color, would you ever do a Kelly? So I thought at one point I would do a Kelly. I really don't want a Kelly ever. I have no interest in it, even if it's a mini. It's not my vibe. I've discovered I am very much a Birkin girl. That is what I want, that is what I like. I've been looking for a Birkin 25 in color but I want a smooth leather. I like, I think I wanna try Swift leather and have it really smushy vibes. Since my Birkin 25 right now is so stiff, I like the idea of having a smushy one and having my 30 in the Togo. I like the Togo leather for 30. I think 25 could be really fun to have like a smushy, Swift leather. Where did you do your microblading? I will link her down below. Her name is Ekaterina and she is on to carry. She is amazing. As you can see, that's all I do to my eyebrows. And naturally, I have no eyebrows. I'm literally bald over the eyebrow area, so like she nailed it. If you were to look at my face pre getting my eyebrows done versus now, I literally look prettier because of what she did to my eyebrows. She, the shape is perfect for my face. It's literally the best decision of my life and I plan on maintaining it for as long as I possibly can do it. I will tattoo these eyebrows on my face because no lie, I love being able to just walk around without makeup and just to have my eyebrows done and just need a bit of mascara and you're ready to go. Like that is how confident these eyebrows have made me feel. Like I feel like I could just like run the world without makeup and just a bit of mascara because of them. What treatments do you do to your face? So I have a whole video where I talk about every single treatment that I do, but um, long story short, I do Botox, I do filler on my lips, and I have a little bit here. I also do BBLs quarterly, so BBL is not for my butt, it's skin resurfacing, it's like a broadband light technology or something, so it's like a heavy duty facial with lasers and stuff. So it resurfaces my skin. It takes away a little bit of the fine lines, but for me it's more about pigmentation and rosacea because I do have a little patch of rosacea here, which without BBL and V-Beam, V-Beam is another little laser treatment that I do in combination with BBL, and I really, 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 really swear by it. I um, have a really nice skincare routine, but aside from that, I would say my biggest love, Botox. And I, I do really love my lips, honestly. I get criticized a lot for um, being so open about the treatments that I do. And to be honest, I never understood women who criticize other women or who are mean to other women. I will never understand that behavior. I find it so, I really find it's weak and it shows really intense insecurities because I would never in my life comment on a woman's appearance or say she doesn't like the lips or doesn't like what you look like. You look, I, I, I don't get women sometimes, but I guess live and let live. If you're, if you're happy living your life talking about people poorly, do you boo, do you. I choose not to live that way and not to talk poorly about people and to live my life with positive outlook where I talk about people in a positive light. I will do one last question because my makeup is now done. I feel like we need to do a steamy one. Okay, last one. How's it going? How's it going with your boyfriend? It is going so well. So it is crazy for me to see that 16 year old me made the right decision and 17 year old me screwed it up. Um, I'm happy that we had the time apart that we did. I feel like we both had our own growing up and our own life to live, and to be honest, um, the career that I lived, the traveling that I did in my life for work, I don't think I would have been able to do it if I would have been in a relationship the way, I, um, the way we are. I don't think I would have wanted to leave. I don't know if that makes sense. I think during my 20s and my early 30s, I needed to have that relationship independence where I just could pick up and bounce whenever I needed to, go on business trips for six weeks at a time and not be concerned about it. I, I'm very happy we had the time apart, but I'm so happy we were able to reconnect 
and be able to kind of like pick up where we left off. I think because we knew each other so well as teenagers and like our values and our base and also the families already knew each other, which made things so much easier. Um, it just kind of speeds everything along a lot quicker on adult terms. Um, but I'm, to be honest, I'm not mad about it. My only thing that would have literally changed everything would have been had Luca not been happy. And she's the happiest. Like she's like literally glowing with like smiles and it makes me so happy to see her this way. So no, it's going super well. Thank you for asking. All right guys, so my makeup is officially done. My Botox dots are covered. I am ready to take on the day. I'll put all the information of the makeup down below. I will put my doctor's name down below as well as this cost per unit because you guys usually ask me and I don't have anything else to say besides I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.